Hey, Algebra 2. Um, we are moving into Chapter 4, Section 2. Um, we're doing Exponential Growth. I believe that's the title. Let me double check. You know how sometimes it takes me a second. Decay. Section 1 was growth. Today, decay. Um, so, as silly as that sounds, yesterday we did um, graphs that went like this. Today we're doing graphs that go like this. Okay, all right, so let's warm up. Evaluate the expressions without using a calculator. Remember, this is just our review, how we remember what we've done in the past. That negative right there, um, we need to make it a positive, which flips your fraction. I can say of three over one, but three over one is silly, so we're just gonna say three to the third power is in fact 27. Um, anything to the zero power is one, okay? Then I have a negative on that on the outside, so it's a negative one. Anything to the zero power is equal to one. Next one, see I have a negative here. It's gonna flip my fraction. Gives me three halves plus one. If I multiply this right here, two goes into four two times. Two times three is six, plus one is, I messed up. Let's start over. I forgot the squared. I flipped the fraction and then let it go. And you guys were like, what? All right, flip the fraction. Remember that it's squared. Um, fraction squared is square the top, square the bottom. Now you multiply it by four, which means those cancel and you're left with nine plus one, which is 10. A savings account pays 3% interest compounded monthly. What is the growth factor for this account? Let's remember this account here, sorry, this equation here. Where this in the middle is gonna be my growth factor. And N is the um, number of times it compounds. Let's get the actual definition of N. I wanna give you compounded N times per year. So I have one, plus 0 0.03 over 12. Need my handy dandy calculator? Sorry for that big old clunk. I had something sitting on my calculator, which is never a good idea. And I get 1.0025 as my growth factor. All right, let's move into our lesson. Um, you have studied exponential growth functions, and in this lesson you will study exponential decay functions, which have the same form, y equals a plus b to the x, where a is greater than zero, and b is between zero and one. This right here is what makes things decay, when b is a fraction. The base b of an exponential decay function is called the decay factor. Decay, decay, eh. <laughs> um, so it's important to know that a is greater than zero and b is a fraction, all right? Parent function for the exponential decay functions. The function f of x is b to the x, where b is a fraction, is the parent function. That's the one we start out with. Um, the general shape, oh, I'm doing that all the time. Sorry, that really doesn't mean anything. Um, the general shape of the graph f equals b to the x is shown. Notice, okay, 0, 1, and 1, b. Okay, if you remember from the um, growth, it's 0, a on the next slide, right? So these are the things that are important to remember. The graph falls from left to right, passing through the points 0, 1, and 1, b. Um, the x-axis is the asymptote. Remember, it cannot cross the um, x-axis, all right? So the domain is all real numbers and the range is y is greater than zero. All right, so let's try this first one. Um, now, in the beginning, when we're just learning these things, we are gonna make a table of values, okay? X and y. I'm just gonna make a few, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Um, and plug them in. So again, this is x. When I have a negative, I flip the fraction and square it. So that becomes two squared, which is four. Two, anything raised to the zero power is one, as I write a zero. 
um, raised to the one, the first power, one half, the second power, one fourth. That's a four. And then we go ahead and graph them. Um, this is always going to be one of our points, right? It's right there. And then one comma b is always going to be a point. It's right there. Cool. Okay, that was just one example, I know. Now let's talk transformation. We already talked transformation with the growth, so transformation with the decay shouldn't be um, too difficult, okay? So reading here, uh, recall that the graph of the function y equals a b to the x is a vertical stretch or shrink of the graph y equals b to the x. And the graph y equals a b to the x minus h plus k is a translation. Remember, um, you have x minus h, so h is your left right shift. And then k is your up down shift. All right, so let's try one. Remember, um, when we plot this, we're going to plot 0 comma a, and then 0 comma, it's, it's actually a times b. So 0 comma a is 0 comma 2, and a times b is 2 times 1 fourth, which is 1 half, so 1 comma 1 half. And that's what we graph right here. And it's a decay, so we're going down from left to right. Okay, graph the function. I have a, bx. So 0 comma a and 1 comma negative 3 times 2 fifths would be negative 6 fifths. Hard to graph that one, I know. And remember, I have a negative here, so we reflect over the x-axis. That's, that's why when I graph 0 comma 3, and one comma negative six fifths, I'm below the x-axis. So here my domain is still going to be all real numbers, but my range is going to be y is less than zero. Okay, a little practice. Okay, these are a little easier. Um, zero comma one, and then one comma two thirds, and graph it. 0 comma negative 2 and 1 comma 2 times 3 fourths is 3 halves, negative 3 halves. Those are my ordered pairs, so that's negative 2 and then 1 3 halves is 1 and a half and graph it. Another one, um, 0 comma 4 and 1 comma 4 fifths. I'm just doing that fraction multiplication. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1 and 4 fifths is just less than 1. Okay, a little bit harder. Okay, I have h is negative 1. Remember, it's x minus h in your formula, so you have to know that h is actually negative 1 because it's x minus a negative 1 to match the formula. And then k is negative 2. So we're going to graph the parent function first, which, let's see, yeah, we're going to graph this first. So I have 0, 3 and 1, 3 halves. And that, get a highlighter out, that is right here and here. Then we will trans translate it, we'll slide it. We're going to go left 1 and down 2. So I went left 1 and down 2 and made a dot. Left 1, down 2, made a dot. And we have our new graph. Okay, it's that simple. It really is. Okay, um, exponential decay models. Um, this is fun, I think, but... Um, when a real-life quantity decreases by a fixed percent each year for other time, or, or other time periods, sorry, the amount y of quantity after t years can be modeled by the equation, where a is the initial amount and r is the percent decrease expressed as a decimal. Note that the quantity 1 minus r is the decay factor. Okay, so this is what we're working with. And... Um, Last lesson, we did growth models, okay? 
No biggie. So snowmobiles, a new snowmobile costs $4,200. The value of the snowmobile decreases by 10% each year. Write an exponential decay model giving the snowmobiles value and y, value y in dollars after t years. Estimate the value after three years. And then we're gonna graph it and then we're gonna use that graph. Cool, cool. So let's look at that equation first. We have y equals a, one minus r to the t. So we know a is 4,200, and my rate is, and it's a minus because we're decaying, 0 0.10%, 10%, and to the t. So this right here is my model. 0.9, that's a, a number between 0 and 1, right? It can be a fraction, um, to the t. So there is my model. So now we know when t equals 3, the snowmobile's value is 3,061.80. All right, so that's the answer to one of them. Now we're going to graph it. Okay, to graph it, we would, well, I'll do it on the next page. To graph it, let me get out of my blue pen. Um, we know y equals 4,200.9 to the t. So I can graph it 0, 4,200 and 1, comma, handy dandy calculator, 4,200 times, oh wait, sorry, times 0.9. 3780. So I can put those points in. And I can even pick a few more points to make it a smooth curve so I can actually read it. <coughs> Sorry. So I've got my curve here. That's my graph. And then that last question says using the graph, can you estimate the value of the snow snowmobile? Estimate that the value. Um, Let's see, sorry, I need the question. $2,500, so that's why I hit 2,500, I hit my curve. I go down and I see that it's about um, five years. Okay, that's what the value at 2,500 will be five years. All right, let's try this one. This is a little practice, right? So graph the function, I'm gonna do my parent function first, one times one fourth to the x. So zero comma one and one comma one fourth. Now I wanna move um, h equals one, so I'm gonna move right one, and k equals one, so I'm gonna move up one. So let's graph the parent function first, zero comma one, and one comma one fourth. Now I'm gonna go right one and up one and put a dot. Right one and up one and put a dot. And that's how I get the graph of my actual function. Okay, parent function, y equals five times two thirds, I don't know why I put a two, to the x. So I have zero comma five and one comma ooh, 10 thirds, which that's gonna be three and one third, just so I can graph it better. So if I graph that, I have zero comma five. Oh, sorry, I don't know what I'm doing yet. My transformations, x minus h. Um, so h equals negative one, so left and k equals negative two, so down. So let's go ahead and graph it. I have zero comma five, one, two, three, four, five, and one comma three and a third, one, two, three and a third. Now let's go left one, down two, one, two. Left one, down two. And we have our curve. Awesome, not too hard. Another guided practice. So my parent function is y equals negative three, three fourths to the x, zero comma negative three, and one comma negative nine fourths. 
that's going to be negative 2 and 1 fourth. That's, I just graph it easier when it's like that. Um, here I have h equals 5, so that is a right move, and k equals 4, so that's an up move. Let's graph the parent function, 0 comma negative 3, 1, 2, 3. And one comma two and a fourth. One, two, and a fourth. Hmm. Oh, these are by twos. Thank goodness, because that certainly was not going to make sense. Let's try that again. Zero, negative three. It still doesn't quite make sense, does it? Well, we're going right, so let's let's go with it. And then two, negative one, two and a fourth. Ooh, I don't like that, but we're going to go with it. I don't like it when they do that with the graphs. So let's take that and go right, 5, 1, 2, uh, 2, 4, 5, 2, 4, 5, and then up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. See, it worked. And then here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, wait, up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. That one didn't quite work. I must have my two and a fourth messed up. Cool. All right, looks good. All right, so let's go back to what if in example four, suppose the value of the snowmobile decreases by 20%. So my rate would be 0 0.20. Write and graph an equation to model this equation situation. Use the graph to estimate when the value of the snowmobile will be $2,500. So we're still at A is 4,200, 1 minus 0.2 to the T. 0.8 to the T. And so that's my model. Now I need to graph it. I don't know why I'm in red pen still, I'm sorry. It probably hurts some of your eyes. Um, so 0, 4,200 would be a point, and 1, 4,200 times 0 0.8 is 3,360. So graph that, and then use the graph to estimate when the snowmobile will be 2,500. Let's see what they said. I lost the page, my page. So that is correct. This is good and about two years. Sweet. Okay, the value has been decreasing by 0.7 since it was new. After three years, the value was 3,000. Find the original cost. Ooh, I like these. I've got y equals, oh, hold on. That's actually my Y. $3,000 equals A. We're looking for A this time. 1 minus 0.7 um, is 0.3 after three years. Okay, so now we have to solve this. Very fun. 0.3 raised to the 3 is 0 0.027. I could have done that without a calculator. Hmm, so this is my current cost after three years of depreciation. I'm going to divide by 0 0.027, and my original cost, holy cow, that's a lot of ones. One, two, three, $111,111. That's an expensive snowmobile. Hmm. I wonder if I've done something wrong. No, original, that looks right. I don't know how else to do it. Sweet. All right, daily homework quiz. Okay, you have these if you printed it out. Cool, cool. That's all I got. Nice work. Congratulations. Talk to you later.